Welcome to CSS Nesting 1. Let's go over what this new CSS feature does and why it is so rad. Okay, so its sort of main premise here is it's a shortcut for creating CSS rules. It is syntactic sugar. It's helping you write the same style as you were, but with less. Get more with less. What else do you want out of sugar? I mean, that's pretty good for me. Um, and how does it do that? It does that by putting selectors inside of other selectors. It allows that and allows mixing and matching with ease. So here, if I turn on my controls here and I pause, uh, when this is in the not nesting state, aha, right there, we can see that here's an example uh, that's not using nesting, and this is creating a counter. Creating a counter has three parts, and before nesting, we had to scatter the three parts across three separate selectors that all kind of had some repetition. We had article, article, and article, right? All of these counter um, properties belong to the scope of article, but we had to sort of repeat our scope in order to get there. Well, that's what's nice about nesting. So if we watch this play out, We'll see it sort of morph into the nesting state. So we saw that the articles were all able to combine up here. We only have to write that once, and we can use this and um, macro here, which represents the previous one. So it says, I'm beginning a new selector, and I want to bring the previous selector as the start of my new selector. So we can and space checked. So we're finding checked children of article. We're looking for dot completed class children that are inside of an article, and we're giving them a before element that represents the current count of chapters. So it's kind of a cool example, at least I think, because we're co-locating all of our styles. It gets to read similar to the way that we think about it, and we get to sort of put all of this logic into one block, which is sort of the way that I think we want to think about it, again, as a sort of single unit of functionality. It's a single algorithm that we're defining. And I think that ends up being really nice that way. So if we scroll down here, I have a couple of demos that are trying to show the relationship of a DL, a DD, and a DT. And we're going to write a few styles for it really quick. So if I go to definition list and I, and I start going in here and I look at uh, and DT, I can find and give them a color of our grape five. And now they all have a color of grape five. And I can look at the DDs and find them and give them a margin inline start of 20 pixels. Right, there they go. Okay, now the one on the bottom here has a class on it called light and it's gonna allow me to tie into that variant right here. So I can say and dot light theme. And so why that's interesting is there's no space. I'm targeting a class in addition with the DL and I can give this one, well, here, let's take these styles here. I guess I didn't need the DT. I was going more for a DD. Here we go. I'll just cut that out. DD. And we'll say color is going to be gray uh, 8. And oh, we need another background color. Background color uh, var gray 2. Right. So now we have a light theme. We have a dark theme when we're able to articulate the variants right here in line in this block and look at how we can sort of co-locate all of these styles being nice and succinct, carrying over our nice nested relationship of our semantic HTML uh, into our nesting. So I hope that was a good introduction. Go check out the spec. There's a lot of examples in there and I'll see you in your style sheets. Take it easy, y'all. Bye.